Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. This video is really an editorial. We're getting reports now that Floyd Mayweather is actually willing to fight Manny Pacquiao again one year after Pacquiao's shoulder surgery, right? First, let me state the obvious. These men owe all of us the match on free TV. Mayweather has a financial advisor, Al Heyman, who is at the forefront of the premier boxing channel, right, PBC. And Al Heyman knows better than anyone how to put boxing on television, right? The PBC right now is on NBC and a lot of other networks. Now, given the fiasco that was Mayweather against Pacquiao, and given the fact that a lot of people feel ripped off, right? They paid $100, $99.99 here in the United States for the high-definition feed. Or perhaps you paid thousands more to be in Las Vegas at the fight right for you to see this fight and then hear that Manny Pacquiao was injured and the rest of this story um, I'm sure a lot of you are feeling slighted I believe Mayweather who really views himself as an ambassador for the sport as a steward for the sport and Manny Pacquiao two of the biggest names in the sport in my opinion if they're gonna get back in the ring they certainly can't ask us for any more money Right? If these guys are serious about this, and I'm a little bit disappointed to hear the news, I'll be blunt. Right? I'd, I'd like to see the next generation get an opportunity at the spotlight. It seems that these OGs are hogging the spotlight past their expiration dates. But, if they're determined to fight, all I ask is that the match be on free TV. Treat this like you would treat the Super Bowl. Right? There are ways for everyone to get paid handsomely while allowing the sport the opportunity to shine in broad daylight. Right? As I said in an earlier video, you can now monetize it with advertisements that are virtual that the people at the arena don't see but that we at home see right it's no different than the first down line in NFL games right a sign could be in the background by Budweiser or whatever the fighters can be fighting in front of that sign they can get the money from the advertiser whose goods or services is being advertised on that sign Right? Meanwhile, the people in the arena get an unobstructed view. Right? I personally don't buy fights to look at who's in the crowd. The point here is have it set up so that people are able to see the fight on free TV. I guarantee you'll get a huge crowd. I guarantee the exposure, the wider exposure, will help the sport of boxing. To Manny and Floyd, let me just put this bluntly, give the fans a break, right? Let's also talk about why boxing needs to be changed. Let's talk about some of the ridiculous arguments being raised by people who should know better, right? Who have private agendas who are only able to make their arguments because boxing is pay-per-view, at least this event was, and not as many people saw the fight as would have if it were on free TV. In other words, it's because most people have yet to see the fight. Only those who watched it on pay-per-view or who watched it live or who watched it close circuit have seen the fight. Right? Because so few people have seen the fight, there are people spreading rumors that are completely ridiculous. Right? Let's address some of them. The first, 
is that an injury to Manny's right shoulder somehow caused him to lose the fight. First off, you should know this. It's basic. Manny's a southpaw. His best punch is a straight left. Has nothing to do with his right hand. Right? Understand Manny couldn't land that straight left. Right? Manny really is banking on you, the public, having not seen the fight to make the argument that some injury he didn't disclose to the Nevada State Athletic Commission until less than two hours before the fight, after checking the box for no injury in the pre-fight four, right? It's only because you may not have seen the fight. The fight hasn't been broadly televised yet that Manny's able to try to claim that some injury to his offhand somehow caused him to lose the fight. Folks, if you saw the fight, it's ridiculous. Max Kellerman, who was criticized for being a good journalist, in asking Pacquiao after the fight why he thought he won the fight. By the way, that's another myth. Right? Max Kellerman was on an ESPN podcast yesterday. And they asked him, what did you think when Manny Pacquiao said to you after the fight that he thought he won the fight? And Kellerman bluntly said, you know, I was thinking, please, Manny, don't go there. Right? I'm telling you, there are a lot of people who view Manny Pacquiao as a hero who are disappointed by, astonished by, his very poor performance, not in the fight, but after the fight. Right? We understand Floyd Mayweather is a brilliant tactician. In the fight, Manny was in against a brilliant tactician. Hey, it happens. Sometimes you're going to lose fights. Sometimes you're going to look bad in fights, especially when your opponent is a great fighter. But Manny has no excuses for his poor post-fight comments. Right? They're ridiculous. As I said in an earlier video, Andre Ward had this fight 8-3 for Mayweather before the 12th round. And then halfway through the 12th round, Andre Ward on the telecast in real time. Before the decisions announced, as the fight's happening, told you that after the first 90 seconds of the 12th round, he thought Manny was losing the 12th round as well. I'm telling you, on Twitter... Lou DiBella gave Floyd Mayweather the first three rounds. We know Floyd was dominant the second half of the fight. Lou DiBella didn't give Manny a round in the first three rounds. This is as the fight's happening. Folks, there's no conspiracy. If you see the fight, you understand. Manny was outgunned. So for Manny after the fight to claim... Oh, my shoulder hurt. It's not even his left shoulder. Oh, my right shoulder hurt. Oh, this hurt me. How did it hurt him? Manny's jab was inaccurate before the fight, folks. There's CompuBox for the pre-fight fights. They're your own two eyes. Right? Manny was predominantly left-handed before this fight. His jab was never accurate. Guess what? He's fighting one of the defensive wizards of the sports history. He couldn't land his inaccurate right jab. Did that surprise you? Do you feel that's because of an injury? Let's also talk about boxing. You know, boxing is really like the NFL. Guys play hurt all the time. Guys have aches and pains all the time. You know, Andre Ward has said in interviews that he fought for years, for years, with a bad right shoulder. And understand, unlike Manny, right, Andre's right-handed. Think about it. While Andre Ward was making his name as one of the best in the sport, Right? Andre Ward was operating with a damaged shoulder. You know, I was watching a Jean Pascal fight once. I'm not kidding. Pascal was looking good in the fight. Then his shoulder popped out. 
Think about the Kevin Love injury in the middle of a boxing match against some guy who's trying to take your head off. No, I'm not kidding. I know there are many in Canada who remember this. In between rounds, Pascal's corner, who has his back, gathered around him in the middle of the fight and popped his shoulder back in. Pascal then goes on to win the fight. Now, for many of you, I'm sure, all of this is news. You're probably watching this thinking, what? What? Let me go Google this. Let me go see if what DeWire is saying here is right. The reason why you don't know about it is because warriors, that's what they are, warriors, like Andre Ward and Jean Pascal, offer no excuses. Right? These guys are, you know, they're, they're not making excuses. They understand that in this sport, there are a bunch of guys with trick elbows, trick knees, etc. in big fights, right? Who know they're not 100%. Who know they wouldn't beat the healthy version of themselves. And they say nothing about it. I'm telling you, I saw Miguel Cotto against Sergio Martinez. Right, I'm telling you, I was in a bar with a Cotto fan. I picked Martinez in the fight. I saw Sergio trying to cope with a bad knee in that match. It was clear that his knee wasn't 100%. It was clear that the Sergio Martinez that night couldn't move like the Sergio Martinez just a few fights ago. The guy who fought the first 11 rounds of the Chavez Jr. fight. It was clear. Now after that fight, double check me on this. Martinez loses his title. I can tell you, I was at Hooters and Campbell. A sports fan was, you know, saying, hey, hey, what do you think about that? What do you think about that? Cotto is a very popular fighter. A lot of people in the crowd were cheering and stuff like that. I'm telling you, I made a video post-fight where I praised Miguel Cotto. Hardly talked about Sergio Martinez's knee. Hardly. Let me tell you, Sergio Martinez, class guy after that fight, knowing that his knee wasn't 100%, praised Miguel Cotto. Martinez's explanation for the fight was that he got caught early and never recovered. Did not blame his knee. Right? Understood that while he himself had some issues, no doubt Cotto had issues. Right? Because boxing is the kind of sport where you're getting hit while preparing for the fight. You're sparring. You're doing road work. You're running around. You might pull a calf. You might pull this. You might pull that. Right? Now, some guys will pull out of, box, out of boxing matches when the injury is severe enough. Right? I applaud Anthony Mundane for acknowledging before the fight that he has an ear infection, which is impacting his balance. So he's postponed a little bit his match against Austin Trout. I respect that 100%. But once you make the decision to actually proceed with the match, then it's bogus after the match if you're going to then talk about an injury that you knew you had at the start of round one. Right? It's different if during the match you pull a muscle or something and you say, you know what? I pulled a muscle. Right? Eddie Chambers against Tomas Ademic couldn't use one hand. Pulled a muscle in the fight. Okay, if after the fight you concede, okay, I didn't throw right hands because I pulled a muscle in the fight, okay, I'll sit around and I'll listen. But I'm not going to listen to anybody who knowingly goes into a fight after making contrary statements to the local athletic commission, right? Knowingly goes into a fight, loses the fight, then starts to complain about an injury to 
They're offhand. Come on. Guys in boxing have bigger problems. Manny, you lost the fight. If this fight were televised live, Manny would not even be able to make these arguments. Right? He lost this fight because he was outthought and outboxed, not because of some sore right shoulder. Understand, too, he tried to hit Floyd with his jab. Don't believe me. Look at CompuBox. He just couldn't do it. Let's talk about some other guys who are using the fact that the sport operates in the shadows on pay-per-view rather than on free TV to their benefit. Now understand Oscar De La Hoya. Let's name names here. Calling him out. Oscar De La Hoya, of course, has had a problem with Al Heyman. Right? Oscar either has or is thinking about filing some Sherman Act. Civil claim. If you could believe that foolishness. Right? Claiming that Al Heyman is violating the Ali Act by somehow acting as a promoter as well as a manager of fighters, right? And that somehow the sport is worse off with boxing on free TV. Now, you know I clearly don't support that last argument, right? I'm telling you I was raised with big fights on network TV, right? I'm not sure if anybody in my family knew what pay-per-view was. When I watched Leon Spinks beat Ali on free TV, right? I saw Ali against Jimmy Young on free TV. I saw Ernie Shavers against Ken Norton on free TV. Folks, these were elite heavyweights, right? These were, these were elite heavyweights. We were watching these fights on free TV. So, of course, Oscar, who's a rival promoter, who fell out with his former partner Richard Schaefer over the fact that Schaefer actually had the best fights happening under Golden Boy Promotions banner, right? Without having long-term contracts with people like Adrian Broner, right? Al Heyman fighters, right? Oscar, of course, with an axe to grind against Floyd Mayweather's financial advisor, right? Who is threatening legal action, who was involved in legal action against Richard Schaefer, Use the opportunity of the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. The fact that Mayweather showed brilliant defense. Dampened Pacquiao, held Pacquiao below a 20% connect rate. Right? Great stuff. If you understand, part of the sport is great defense. It was great stuff. Right? The fact that Pacquiao came with a lot of energy. Couldn't land punches. Couldn't even throw punches was being tamed repeatedly by Floyd's straight right hand, right? Of course Oscar would use this opportunity to say that there wasn't a lot of action in the fight, to say that if you want real action, tune in next week for Canelo against James Kirkland, right? Come on. It's ridiculous. Oscar should preface his comments with statements like, understandably I'm bitter because I got beaten by Floyd Mayweather in the ring. Understandably I'm bitter because Al Heyman has the sport on free TV and has more fighters under his banner than I have under my banner. Right. With that being said, here's what I thought about the fight. If Oscar's being honest, that's what he needs to do. Also, as for Oscar's predictions, as I've said, just Google it. Every time Floyd announces that he's fighting an opponent, Oscar comes out and picks the opponent. Right? Food for thought. Another guy with an agenda. It cuts both ways. Is Alex Ariza. Look, we know Alex Ariza is sore with Manny Pacquiao's camp and with Freddie Roach because he got fired. Right? We know Freddie Roach is the one who fired him. Okay, great. So, of course, Alex Ariza wants to confuse casual fans. Right? Alex Ariza has come out with statements that 
Freddie Roach is too broken down. Freddie Roach suffers from Parkinson's. Freddie Roach is too broken down to be in the corner of Manny Pacquiao. That somehow Pacquiao is hurting himself by having Freddie Roach in his corner. Now I have to say, when I read this, man, I'm lucky I had an empty stomach. It made me want to throw up. Understand that recently, we don't even have to go back years. Recently, I'm talking about like right now. Freddie Roach has lifted Miguel Cotto to the middleweight title. Think about it. Miguel Cotto had run into some headwinds in his career. You might recall that he lost to Austin Trout, for example. Right? He ran into headwinds. He needed a boost. He gets together with Freddie Roach. Understand how that happened. Miguel Cotto, who fought Manny Pacquiao in the past, who knows boxing, was so impressed with the level of Freddie Roach's clients that Miguel Cotto approached Freddie Roach and wanted to be one of them. Right? Freddie Roach took in Miguel Cotto. Cotto then looked great against Delvin Rodriguez. Cotto then looked great against Sergio Martinez. Right? Cotto looked great that night. Cotto was on his A game. Right? That's Freddie Roach today. Now, how is Freddie Roach so good that elite fighters, Miguel Cotto, right? All he has to do is retire and he'll be in the Hall of Fame. Right? Why is it that guys in the game, Miguel Cotto, thinks highly of Freddie Roach, picks Freddie Roach as his trainer, and then looks at his best, while at the same time Alex Ariza is saying Freddie Roach is, is too run down to be an elite trainer. Come on, man. Right? If I had a red flag here, I would throw it. The only reason Alex Ariza, in my opinion, is able to get away saying statements like this is because the sport foolishly has big events like this on pay-per-view and not on free TV. Right? You know, let me just say, I, you know, statements like this would be ridiculous if everyone knew Freddie Roach's history or if everyone knew the history of the sport. I'm telling you, some of the best trainers I've known have been older guys, right? Guys over 65 years of age, right? Just look at the man who trained Riddick Bowe, who trained Freddie Roach, who trained Joe Fraser, who trained Michael Spinks, Eddie Futch, right? Eddie was an older man who was still training great fighters. Look today at Nacho Beristain. I don't even know how old Nacho is. I'm telling you, Nacho Beristain today, forget reputation, I'm talking about today, is one of the best trainers in the sport. Go back in history. Look at Ray Arcel, Roberto Duran's trainer. Right? He's an elite he was an elite trainer for decades. He was an elite trainer when he was in his 70s. Let's talk about someone else with an agenda. And he's one of my favorite fighters ever. He's one of the most dominant guys I've ever seen in the ring. He's so dominant that I used to argue on his side in arguments with my dad about who would win a fight between him and Ali. I'm telling you, if you were around in the late 1980s, you understood that Mike Tyson had one of the dominant reigns in heavyweight history. Right back then, it, it, it didn't matter who had what belt. If you went to 100 people on the street and said, who's the heavyweight champion of the world? 99 of them would say Mike Tyson. 
right? There were fights where guys literally tried to hug Tyson to death. They were so afraid of fighting him. Look at the Bone Crusher Smith fight, right? Tyson was knocking guys out. The guys he didn't knock out, guys were hugging him to death, right? I'm a big fan of Mike Tyson's. Big fan. Now, let me just say this. People need to understand that Mike Tyson and Floyd Mayweather had a falling out years ago, right? It did not involve boxing, right? They had a falling out over a personal matter years ago. I'll leave it to the men themselves to talk about it. Understand, according to some reports, Mayweather actually used to hang out at Tyson's house, right? Tyson considered Mayweather to be a buddy. Right? The two guys had a falling out. According to some reports, it involved a woman. Whatever. Right? Let's just say, again, these guys don't exactly exchange Christmas cards every year. Right? Tyson doesn't consider Mayweather to be the best person he's met. Okay, fair enough. Two guys don't like each other. The problem's this. Mike Tyson makes comments before the fight, then, of course, after the fight, and doesn't preface the comments, right? Doesn't say, look, you know, Floyd and I have had a falling out over a non-boxing-relating matter. Isn't that what he should say? Should he say, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask about this fight because I don't like Floyd for personal reasons, right, that I'm not going to discuss here. Instead, you know the rest. The press is just there to pick up statements about how Floyd's this, Floyd's that, etc. And then they're going to link it to, right, whatever they want to. Right, just understand that Mike Tyson making comments comes from a place that isn't completely focused on what's in the ring. What would have been surprising is if after the fight, Tyson would have sent a text that said overwhelm, not underwhelm, right? Overwhelm. That would have been surprising, right? That would be like Don King praising a Bob Arum fight, right? Unfortunately, again, because the sport operates in the shadows, <laughs> because no one's aware of the full story, because people have agendas, because Oscar De La Hoya could be on the other side of the street in litigation from Al Heyman, right? And no one seems to be aware of that fact, that reporters foolishly are there to get Oscar's opinion on an Al Heyman event, right? It's only because people haven't added up the fact that Alex Ariza is sore with Freddie Roach. Keep in mind, at one point, Ariza physically kicks Roach after Roach, you know, was foolish in, um, you know, being abusive toward Arisa and Robert Garcia, right, before a Brandon Rios fight, right? Understand that's how big the tension is, right? It's only because people don't realize that Manny Pacquiao is not Freddie Roach's only fighter. Folks, he's not Freddie Roach's only champion. That a reporter keeps his mic on, as Alex Ariza says, Roach is too broken down to be an effective trainer for Manny Pacquiao. If I were doing the interview and I started to hear him say Roach is too broken down, my finger would move that mic to the off position. I would know that these kind of statements aren't factual enough for me to even relay them to the public. Right. So let me just say this. The sport needs to be on free TV. It needs more transparency. The lack of transparency has us getting misstatement after misstatement. Right. Manny Pacquiao losing this fight because of a right shoulder injury. Come on. Come on. Right. Oscar's comments about the fight. Come on. Right. Ariza's comments about Freddie Roach. Tyson's comments about the fight? Come on, man. 
come on. Let's just say the level of reporting you're getting on this event hasn't been A+. Plus, right? I hope you look under the covers. I hope you do your own research. I hope you are here online figuring out what's real and what's unreal. Right? Let me hear from you. If there are other aspects of this fight that you believe have been misreported, that you believe come from, let's say, folks who are biased for reasons other than the action in the ring, then I hope you leave those comments here in the comment section to this video. Let me just point out that Pacquiao's comments about his shoulder are so outrageous that the Nevada State Athletic Commission is considering disciplining him, right? Because understand, he submitted forms to the commission. And the forms are inconsistent with the statements we're hearing now. Right? Food for thought. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.